I think it'll be helpful for us to do this one for everyone, yeah. Okay, so um, let's uh, try this mechanism now. Um, so uh, we talked about it, remember, um, of course, how do we get these products from this starting material? We know that ozone is going to cut this double bond in half, cut this alkene in half, and again, if you want to, you can put those H's there to make sure Right, and this DMS, remember, is these reductive conditions, okay? Remember, DMS is this molecule here, dimethyl sulfide, okay? And uh, when you do reductive conditions, you get ketones and aldehydes out. So it just cuts it in half and puts oxygens there, okay? So, but it's not as simple as that in the mechanism. Okay, so remember, we add this first and then this second. So I'm going to erase all of this stuff. And then I will write the structure of ozone. Ozone's got that permanent dipole on it. Um, in fact, that's the driving force for the reaction. Uh, this is a very nucleophilic oxygen here. So what will happen is, um, actually, so we learned about these 1,3 cycloadditions. This is the first step. So again, you know, you learn this, uh, this reaction in organic one, right? But the um, mechanism you wouldn't be able to understand until we did that um, the last chapter, okay, so when we talked about the cycloaddition. So what will happen here is that will attack there, and then this alkene double bond will attack that oxygen there, and the driving force for that will be the relief of that positive charge on that oxygen there. So when we do that, We're going to make this intermediate. Oops. Like that. Okay, let's put all our electrons in. Okay, this intermediate is called a melosinide. What was the other name? Rene said. Oh, he was talking, and he was actually talking about um, the second intermediate, uh, uh, which is called a trioxaline. So we'll talk about that in a second, yeah. Um, okay, so. Then what it'll do here is do a retro 1,3. But instead of um, breaking these carbon-oxygen bonds, it's going to break this carbon-carbon bond here. Okay? And so what we'll make is the, the driving force of that carbon-carbon uh, bond formation is going to be the fact that these electrons here are going to come down and make this double bond here. Okay? And again, you could start from this side or from the other side. Either way would be fine. Okay? Again, this is a... a uh, reaction where all the bonds are being broken, and it's a concerted reaction, all the bonds are being broken and formed at the same time. So, so is the first one, by the way. All of these cycle additions, as you know, are. Okay, so and then we'll make this other intermediate, okay. and in this case, we made it the aldehyde being the, inter the, what we call the Kriegi intermediate. Um, okay, 
So we have that. And that gives, that looks like what these arrows are saying, right? But what will happen here, so now we have one of our products, but we don't have the other one, right? This one's called the Kriege Intermediate. I don't know if Renee had said that earlier, but um, uh, this negative charge here and this delta negative charge here don't like each other. So what you'll do is have like kind of a rotational uh, change here with this aldehyde intermediate flipping around. So kind of it'll do a rotation like that. And is it okay if I just erase and then put okay. I mean, does that really matter, though? You just draw it, draw it the right way? Well, you draw it the right way so it'll be ready for another one three cyclo addition. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you wanted to, if you're doing a, this mechanism on a test, just draw it the right way, you know, because I, I understand that, but I just wanted to emphasize what's going on. That's like the physical chemistry of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we've got that now, okay? So this, in particular, if you were wondering, is called the Kriege intermediate. And then, again, very nucleophilic oxygen, electrophilic carbon. So we're going to have another 1,3 cycle addition. Like that. So you get that. Again, so this is what I was talking about. If you have on your ketone, or if you got an aldehyde that is not formaldehyde that you're making, um, two different substituents, you're going to have a stereocenter here and here. Okay, so in both of these, there's not two different substituents though. And um, uh, we were calling this the trioxaline. Not that you need to know any of these names for this, okay? But uh, just in case somebody tells you. In fact, um, another name for this is uh, carbonyl oxide. Carbonyl oxide, okay? So just in case you hear it sometime, okay? So 1,3, retro 1,3, another 1,3 cyclo addition. And this is where it gets stuck. Okay, after the first step, after you put your ozone in there. In fact, your solution will kind of turn blue when, and that's how you know you've got, you know, your ozone in there and it's all reacting, okay? Um, and then it gets stuck here, and then you've got to add your DMS to it, okay? Reductive conditions. So remember, DMS looks like this, dimethyl sulfide. It's very oxophilic. Sulfur is. It likes to make sulfoxides from sulfides. Okay, so again, like I was saying in class, I would probably prefer to attack this oxygen here because it's less sterically hindered than that oxygen there. But um, honestly, I probably wouldn't take off anything if you attacked either one of them. And what would happen here is you would attack that oxygen there. These electrons will go there, like that, these electrons will go there, and these electrons will go there, okay? So when you, if you follow all those electrons around, what you should end up getting is the ketone from here, okay? Mm -hmm. The aldehyde from here, the top portion, so we'll draw it kind of like how it looks from there. And then here, right, you got dimethyl sulf 
dimethyl sulfide reacting with that oxygen. So what you're going to have is dimethyl sulfoxide. And remember, um, well, sulfur with three bonds and two electrons likes to have a positive charge. And you, you, know, you knew that anyways, but you also know that that double bond, that pi bond, is very, it's not easily overlapped between those two atoms because sulfur is very big relative to oxygen. So the preferred resonance structure is, is like this, one? yeah. So, it, and it comes directly from this mechanism, you know, so you don't have to, you know, like kind of remember how the bonds are supposed to be. But again, it's, this part is, I'm not so concerned about, you know, I mean, and honestly, I just, I want you to know this stuff. The mechanism is important of, for you guys to understand how it all comes from, okay? Do you have the any questions? The only confusing part is that it creates, like in the mid-step, when it's carbo, carbon dioxide, it's like you've created, it looks like it's almost done, and you have to go back into it. I know, head. right? That yeah. That's confusing. So it. the thing is, is um, there was a lot of controversy about this mechanism, but uh, apparently it's, you know, been radioisotope radio iso labeled, and, you know, they figured out that if you... Uh, radio label carbon seven uh, or oxygen seventeen. You'll find that it uh, goes through this set of intermediates. So, so they argued about whether or not it would. Yeah, it, it, so they did argue about that. Exactly what you're saying is why would it do that? You know. Okay. But yeah, it's interesting though. It's funny. It's kind of funny how education works. Yeah. It is. Well, we had to figure out, we had to see the results of the experiment before, and that's how all organic is. We got to see the results before, I mean, the, sometimes we can predict, you know, obviously, you know, that's what we're that's doing in organic, that's the point, you know, but if there's something totally new you comes out, out, you got to figure out what, you, what you're working with, you know. So, um, and again, like we said, if you do oxidative conditions, which we'll talk about in next chapter, um, this is reductive conditions. Oh, the other thing you can use, I forgot to tell him. You, you said that. Oh. Is zinc. Yeah, yeah, I said it in class, but not on the video today. Yeah. You can use zinc instead. Uh, do the same thing. Grab yeah. Or and grab I guess there was another question in class. Why did the DMS wait till here to attack? You know, why tell this stuff? We didn't add but it. But it's yeah. because we haven't added it yet, okay? This was all one. Like this is all, it gets steps. to here with the ozone yeah. by itself, okay? The second step is, yeah. You wrote it in multiple steps, but it would happen relatively quickly. Well, so, no, it takes this many steps, exactly that many steps. Well, I meant from there to trioxalate. Like yeah, it'll it. take one, two, three, four steps. Okay. And then... The next step is the I meant experimentally, step. like in the uh, lab. Yeah, and in the lab you're going to add happens. that thing. Yeah, mechanistically it's going to take this many steps. But yeah, in the lab it's real easy. You just bubble some ozone through your solution, wait for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, until it turns blue, and then you know it's yeah, cool. It's, and then you add some yeah. DMS, and then you go and rotavap it down. Because uh, you usually do this in DCM, you know, so everything is split, gone. Then how do you separate those two if I only want the outlet? Well, this thing has a very small boiling point, very low uh, boiling point, so it rotavaps away too. You usually don't want to be making formaldehyde, yeah. you know, I mean, why make that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So usually it's what, this part that you're more interested in, you know, so, but those are all good questions, you know. That's practical questions, actually, which is the real point, you know. Right. Any more? Okay, cool.